We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with Ed Coach Chaka Smart here from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. Always during this portion of the program, we welcome a special guest, in this case, one of the Longhorn players. And I always leave it to Shaka for the uh, introduction, especially since you got to know this guy pretty well a few years back. Yeah, excited to have Kamaka Happy here on the show. And, uh, you know, your uh, progression, Kamaka, has, has been interesting to follow. And I, and I want to get Coach to start off with this, and then we're going to ask you some questions oh, about it as well. And it comes from most recently, uh, your thoughts, Shaka, on we were talking about putting in the deposits and the work that a, that a guy does that ultimately led to your decision back a few games back to say we need him in the starting lineup. Well, you know, Kamaka's a guy, if you go back to his freshman year, that, uh, you know, has always contributed to our team spirit and, and connectivity. And, um, you know, we, over the break, um, you know, that we became, you know, it was always clear, but it came even more clear that we needed that more on the court. And, you know, he's a guy that when he's been on the bench has been unbelievable with, uh, his talk and energy and, and what he gives to the people around him. Uh, but, again, it became clear that you know, we, all, the, all the really good teams have that on the court, and uh, we didn't feel like we were getting enough of that from, from certain other guys, so that's why we inserted him in the lineup. And, and for the casual fan who says, you know, that's great seeing the energy, uh, can we also get the production? I mean, that's something that always goes into a coach's yeah. plan about what your plan is for the kind of production you can get from a guy like Kamaka. For sure. And, you know, uh, the production is something that, uh, you know, got, all the guys want to produce. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're still working towards a point where we have, uh, you know, a consistent group of maybe seven, eight guys that produce every single game. But, you know, if you do know that you can count on the right mindset, the right approach, the right uh, where we used to use was teamship, uh, you know, then we believe that, that that does lead to, you know, as a team being able to play better. Come on, okay. did, it, did it take you a little bit of time going back to, to last year into this year to kind of figure out and get comfortable with everything that coach was just talking about there, about what, what they expect from you in teamship, mm -hmm. in in uh, the spirit and the work that you put in on the practice floor as well as on the floor when you get in the game? Uh, I, wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily say it took a while just because I feel like that's the kind of guy that I am. Like um, One thing that I know is that I'm always going to have energy and I'm always going to talk and I'm always going to be a vocal leader out there. And I feel like uh, those characteristics just help me transition well into, into doing that. Um, and I trust Coach um, a lot, and I know he's going to do what's best for the team, and I want to do what's best for the team. So if we're on the same page with that, I know it's gonna, uh, things are going to come together well. Does it uh, also, I don't know, if it, it, strange is not the word, but it, it, is it different to you as a person to have that come so naturally to you to be that kind of guy in terms of your spirit and drive and energy and all that sort of stuff? And you've got teammates teammates who are really good at doing what they do but it doesn't come as naturally to them to be as vocal as verbal that sort of thing does it strike you as different because it comes to you so naturally yeah yeah it is it is a little bit different um i guess you could say it's just the way that my parents raised me um and how i came up but just being able to to kind of share my experience with with, the with my teammates and just being able to help them kind of kind of give their spirit and uh, give energy to the team is, is really good. And I just feel like that's, that's another one of my roles on the team is just to be able to expand our, our team spirit. Shaka, you, uh, coaches are always looking for that kind of guy as well as you know somebody that can produce and you want the proper balance and all that sort of stuff as well. Do you take note and does your staff take note of it? I remember when you had Darren Horn on your staff and he was up there as well to see Kamaka. But when you guys are recruiting somebody, how much does that weigh in, the, the factor of what you're seeing in terms of the energy yeah. and the drive that they have? It weighs in quite a bit because you know, people, for the most part, are who they are. And while they're in college, you know, your, your hope is that you, you can really help them develop. Uh, but I would say 99% of people, even though they develop, they, they pretty much stay true to the core of who they were before they even came to college. So when we recruited Kamaka, um, you know, I remember he and I having this conversation all the time about how we felt like he was a really, really good cultural fit for what we were looking for, in addition to being someone who's a, who's a very good basketball player. Uh, and he's come in here, he's been very bought in to the stuff that we've asked him to do. Um, you know, his 
ability to be a true student athlete uh, certainly needs to be mentioned and commended while he's here mm -hmm. as our guest. Uh, just completed another semester with a 4.0. Uh, I believe he's at a 3.93 overall. Um, and he's a guy that is on track to graduate from Texas in three years uh, and potentially be in position to get two degrees from Texas during his time here. So he's just a high-level person. Uh, you know, sometimes you boil it down to that, and you want as many of those as you can. Now, but congratulations, first of all, on the, on the second uh, consecutive 4.0. The the the, uh, the three nine three. I mean, what happened on the first deal to keep you from being four? Uh, they that? snuck in an A minus during my first semester, and then during the uh, summer semester as they well. They snuck but. in an A yeah. minus. What class was that? Uh, so the first semester, I, I believe I got an A minus in physical science. And then this past summer, I got an A minus in accounting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you recognized your mistakes yeah. there in the class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because you know. I was really competitive in school mm -hmm. in, in addition to, you know, in, in sports. Um, but, you know, I would say over the years, you know, 90 some percent of the guys that I've coached, you know, it's, it's been a struggle to try to get them to be as competitive academically yep. as, they, as they are in basketball. And that's, you know, maybe falls under the category of it, of it is what it is. But, you know, I remember, you know, when he did get an A minus, he, he was truly upset about it. And that, that speaks to the standard that he's set for himself. Most of our guys would be ecstatic uh, about an A minus, especially, you know, from the University of Texas is, you know, these classes, he's talking accounting, it's, that's not uh, basket weaving. I mean, that, that's, that's a hard class and he worked his tail off for that A minus, but you know, the, the plan is the rest of the way all A's. Exactly. Now, now, are you able to, or I guess I should ask you, how are you able to resolve that in your mind about having a couple of A minuses when everything else is an A or A plus? Uh, just, you know, kind of getting with our academic advisor and her talking to me just about how, like, that's not, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> uh, but also just, you know, continuing to grow um, as a student. I feel like getting with her and just kind of her helping me with my time management and just holding me accountable for uh, certain assignments and stuff. So We know you're a competitive player on the floor. Coach just mentioned uh, competitive in the classroom. Describe that. How are, how, how are you competitive academically? Um, I feel like it started when I was growing up, uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, me and I grew my friends would always see, like, who could finish the year off with the best grades. And I guess that just carried over through throughout college. So, yeah. His background, uh, he mentioned his parents. Uh, the, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And, you know, they, they raised... Kamaka to be who he is now and you know I think being able to grow up in that type of setting where those sorts of things are valued and even you know uh, celebrated uh, has made him who he is and, and uh, you know we really appreciate having that. All right uh, Kamaka Hepa is joining us he'll be with us for another segment here as we uh, talk about uh, his development as a basketball and as a student athlete as we continue from Pluckers the West Campus location Longhorn Weekly with head coach Shaka Smart continues in a moment. 9.20 to go, Oklahoma 50, Texas 48. Outside, Hepa, quick trigger for three, good! Kamaka Hepa with the three ball to put Texas back in front. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with head coach Shaka Smart. Want to remind you the Texas Farm Bureau Insurance is proud to offer its members two free tickets to select Longhorn's men's or women's basketball games this season. Visit texasports.com slash Texas Farm Bureau for details on how to request tickets. That three-pointer made by Kamaka Hepa put the Longhorns in front 51-50 there. Uh, it tied your career high for threes in a game. How comfortable and natural is it to you now, even as opposed to last year? You've always been a good outside shooter, but even more developed this year in shooting the three ball? Uh, I've definitely built confidence uh, over the summer and then the fall time workouts. Um, and then also just getting with, getting with the coaching staff and then kind of them helping me and you know, just instilling in me that confidence uh, has got me more comfortable out there. But also just um, kind of getting in those live game reps has also really helped. Okay, now we've talked a lot about uh, your background. Folks are familiar uh, with Kamaka. Know that he's from Alaska. Uh, but, but I was taken by surprise at something I recently learned that uh, at least this season, I've been saying your hometown incorrectly. I've been telling people, because it was originally in the media guide, that you were from Barrow, Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, I've since learned that uh, you're, and, and 
I, I pride myself on being able to get pronunciations correctly. So, yeah. so let me know if I've got this wrong. Uh-huh. Um, is it Ukiavik? Yeah, that, that sounds pretty right. I, uh, I, it's called Ukiavik, so it's kind of a hard word to say because it, it is of a uh, Inupiaq language. So that's just kind of the native name um, that it was called before it was even called Barrow. Um, in, rec- in recent years, they, they've kind of go- gone back to that name. So it, it's, it's the actual official name of your hometown, as you said it. Ut- 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 yeah, Utkegovic. Ut- Ut- Utkegovic. Okay. All right. I, I, I was hoping to at least be in the ballpark <laughs> a little bit there. But I mean, folks got to know it as Barrow, Alaska as well. So it, 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 was it uh, you didn't try to correct Coach Horn or, or Coach Smart at the time going on and say, oh, actually, it's not really Barrow. It's uh, Utkegovic. It, actually, at the time when uh, when they were recruiting me, it was Barrow at the time. Oh, so okay. It was, it so, was, the, so it's officially – there was a time when it officially went back. Correct, yes, yes. And I want to say it was a year or two years ago. So it was after I, I moved from there. But – so it, it, it has been pretty recently. Oh, okay. All right. But when you were a kid growing up there, what did you guys call it? We called it Barrow. Um, okay. My grandmother, who is from uh, Utkagovic, she would call it that, and my mom would call it that. But myself, I grew up like kind of in a different era, I guess you could say. Um, and I, I grew up calling it Barrow, but um, because they've recently changed the name, I just kind of pay respect, and that, that's kind of what I go by it as. Okay, all right. But just to let folks know from here forward, I'm, I'm going to try to say it properly when yep. we're doing the starting <laughs> lineups there afterwards. Um, in, in, in terms of – the being in the starting lineup i know it's a confidence thing and all of that sort of stuff as well does it mean a lot to you to be a starter does it matter to you uh, you know knowing that you can contrib- contribute however whatever uh, the coaching staff asks of you uh it is it is different but i wouldn't say that it changes my role at all um regardless if i'm playing 30 minutes or if i'm playing zero minutes i feel like my role is to is to just be vocal and to help my teammates be the best that they can be. And I feel like I can do that either way, as a starter or not. I, I remember uh, last season, you and all of your teammates, to a man and to their credit, all said during the NIT run, this is not the tournament we wanted to be in, but we're going to make the most of it and do the best we can. And that's what you did and, and played five games and won five games and won the NIT title. I looked at that tournament also as a developmental process for guys like yourself for Courtney Ramey, uh, for Jericho, uh, obviously, uh, for Gerald, uh, some guys to get additional time, additional experience, additional minutes. Of, how much did it help you? It, it definitely helped me a lot, um, just being able to be in the rotation a little bit more as a freshman and just kind of uh, be able to gain more game experience is, uh, is definitely a lot. I feel like that's one way, or that is the best way to uh, become a good college basketball player is just to make the most of your game experiences. Um, how do you balance when we talked about the 4.0s you've had um how does how does one balance the academic and uh basketball side of things i've 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 often heard student athletes say it's all about time management it's Mm -hmm. all about i mean is is it similar to you or does that come pretty easy to you to manage and balance all the time um i wouldn't necessarily say that it comes easy to me um but i feel like i do work hard to kind of get with our academic advisor and I feel like um, she helps me a lot and puts me in good position to kind of get those kind of grades. And I feel like it's definitely on me, but uh, she does a great job of holding me accountable, and, and we work really well together. So I feel like that's another reason. Okay, take me through and take us through a typical day, not a game day. First, let's just say a practice day. You got to, uh, you know, when you're going to have a practice during the course of the day, it's not a day off, so you're actually going to have practice. But it's also classroom. Now, you guys are out of class right now, but let's just say you're in class in the semester. Mm -hmm. What is a typical day like for you? What time do you get up? How do you go progress through your day and the way you balance everything? Uh, So on a typical day, um, I start class at 930. So I'll wake up around 845 just so I can get up, go get breakfast before class. And then I'll have class from 930 to 1230. Um, and then after class, I'll go over to the uh, academic center and I'll get with our academic advisor and work with her for uh, about an hour and a half, two hours for, for however long as I can. And By the way, let's give credit. Who's your academic advisor? Uh, Kat Hastings. Absolutely, yeah. it's Kat yeah. Hastings. So I will give her some uh, props as well. So then yeah. you work with her for about an hour and a half or so? Yeah, so I usually try to get out of there around 2 o'clock. So that gives me about an hour, a ha- hour and a half of just doing homework, working on assignments, or just planning the next day. Um, and then after that, I'll, I'll probably go back to my room for a little bit, and then I'll try to get to the gym a little bit uh, before practice, which is usually at 3 o'clock, uh, just so I can get some extra shots up. 
Um, and then we'll usually practice from three to forever, or forever how long we, we practice for, um, which is typically we usually get out of there around 5.30 to 6, uh, depending on the practice day. Um, and then after that, uh, I'll probably stay for another 15, 20 minutes just to get some step in threes in. Um, and then I'll head home, shower, um, then I'll go get um, dinner at the tank. And then after that, it's mostly academics for me. For folks who don't know the tank, the, the dining yeah, it's facility. Yeah, uh, Texas Athletic Nutrition Club, so just the uh, cafeteria for athletes. Okay, all right. So and then what time do you get to bed? Um, depending on how heavy my workload is for that week or if I have a test coming up, then I'll obviously sleep later because I have to study a little bit more. Um, but I try to get one thing that our um, – our weight training coach, uh, Coach Hootie, uh, stresses it to us is just getting, trying to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night so that we're well rested. So I'll try to get to sleep before one o'clock if I can, 1230. You brought up uh, Coach Hootie, Andrea Hootie, for uh, folks who, who uh, didn't know. Uh, how different is it working with her this season than, than in the past? Um, it's, it's a much different approach, but I feel like she has, uh, like she, re she genuinely wants to sit, wants us to succeed and you can tell by the way she coaches us um, I believe she's one of the smartest people on the coaching coaching staff if not the smartest and definitely the most tough uh, and me and her have just really built a great relationship these past couple of months that we've been together she wasn't with us uh, throughout the whole summer so it was kind of hard to go for, go uh, transition kind of mid not not mid-season but right before the season um, but she's done a great job with us and and I appreciate everything that she's done what do you like best about being a student athlete at UT um, my favorite part about being a student athlete at UT is definitely, that's actually a tough one. Um, I would say just the, 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 uh, the team atmosphere, uh, that, that me and me and the guys have kind of built. I, I genuinely feel like it's a family and I know I can, uh, trust my brothers on and off the court with anything. So for a minute there, I thought you were going to say dinner at the tank, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Kamaka, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you dropping by. All right. Kamaka Hepa with us coming up. Coach Smart rejoins us. We'll get to some of your questions as well. When Longhorn Weekly continues here on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield IMG College.